Hello and welcome to enhancement session 3 on explaining decreases in mass. Before we get started, ensure you have a pen and paper to write on and can you go to a quiet room where you can focus and can you not have any mobile phone or te technology with you. So, uh, what we're doing about this learning session is to know how to explain decreases in mass in chemical reactions. Uh, there are three retrieval questions just on the, uh, on the page here. Can you pause the video for three minutes and have a go? Okay, so you should have given yourself three minutes there to complete those questions. Can you pick up a green pen or if you don't have one, a pencil and we'll go through these questions in retrieval practice now. So the first question was what is meant by conservation of mass? Put simply, conservation is mass of mass. Uh, the mass of the reactant of the reactants equal to the mass of the products. The mass of the reactants equal to the mass of the products. So in substances, they are they're not broken down, they're not created or destroyed, they are simply just transferred from one form to another. The second question: why do equations have to be balanced? Uh, again, to put simply, they are just to show that the mass is conserved. So it will show that the mass on one side of the reactants and the side of the products are conserved, are kept the same. And the final question, if you've gone to extension, what can you not do when you balance equations? You cannot put small numbers after the compound. For example, CO2 here and CO3. You cannot change a number from a 2 to a 3 because that changes from CO2 to CO3 trioxide. Numbers can only go before uh, the actual compounds or the elements. So it can only go before the CO2 there to make two CO2 uh, or to uh, before the two CO3 there. You cannot change the actual compound itself. That will change, change the structure. So the success criteria for this learning session are just to, for developing, just to recall the term conservation of mass, what it means with a couple of example of equations. For secure knowledge, I'm uh, going to explain why mass might change during a chemical reaction with a progress check. And then to master this technique, you're going to apply your knowledge of conservation of mass to examples and consolidate with a hinge question. On the screen, we have a mixture diagram here of two liquids uh, being reacted together to form a solid precipitate. So the question above just asks what will happen to mass? Will it increase, decrease, or stay the same? Why do you think this? First of all, it will stay the same because of conservation of mass. Even though a solid has been formed, all the mass is still being contained within the test tube. So it will be conserved, it will be kept the same. So uh, we're going to follow this on with looking at the following word and symbol equations. So the word equation for lead nitrate and potassium iodide arrow. This is just show a chemical reaction has taken place. Uh, lead iodide plus potassium nitrate. Uh, the simple equation coming up now uh, is just shown there, and that is already balanced. So, the first task, uh, can you pause the video for four minutes for this, is to draw the simple equation using circles as elements. So, each element must be drawn as an individual circle. So, pause it for four minutes. Now, you should have given yourself there four minutes just to complete that and draw those elements as circles there. So, if you just click on this, it'll be coming up now. So, we have PbNO32 there, so lead nitrate, which is just shown here. So, we've got six oxygens, indicated by this three times two there. Two nitrogens, in brackets, and one lead, indicated there. Plus, two, two lots of the potassium iodide arrow show these are reacted together to make lead iodide and potassium nitrate lead iodide and potassium nitrate why i ask you to draw in these circles as elements is to show that the elements are not created or destroyed so there's no new elements here no new number of elements they are simply just rearranged uh, and not created or destroyed once again this just shows how it, the substances are conserved. Okay, 
So we do know already that the mass should be conserved during this reaction indicated just here. So we've got two liquids forming a solid and another liquid in an enclosed test tube. But what would happen if one of the products was a gas and it was allowed to escape? Well, the mass would decrease, but it would still be conserved because it is not just being created or destroyed. It is just disappearing from the test tube and so cannot be measured. A, sec a second example shown here is another reaction between di dilute hydrochloric acid and calcium carbonate chips. They are reacting together and they are forming gas bubbles, so a gas. What do you think will happen to the mass? Will it increase, decrease or stay the same? Why do you think this? Give yourselves 30 seconds just to think about this. Jot down any ideas if you can and we'll explain it in 30 seconds. Okay, so your 30 seconds is up there. The mass will decrease because there's nothing stopping the gas bubbles from escaping the conical flask. So it will decrease even though the total, it will always be conserved. The mass on the balance to be measured will be decreased because gas is being produced that is allowed to escape from the conical flask. So if a gas is produced, then the mass will decrease. Just to recap there. Okay, so you have four examples on, on the screen just there. Showing first, number one, water and salt. Balance there. The salt is dissolved in water, forming salt water, like the sea. Second example, you've got ice, which is melting into water. The third example, you have a can of Coca-Cola. It has been opened and left for a while. So it's not been drunk, but it's been left for a while. And then example four, we have an acid and magnesium, and it reacts and it forms bubbles uh, here. What I want you to do, guys, is pause the video for four minutes again. Can you write down whether the mass for each of these, so one, two, three, four, will increase, decrease, or stay the same? And give a reason for each one. So you have four minutes. From now, pause the video, please. So, your four minutes is up. You should have had a go at each one of those and give a reason for that. So, can you pick up a green pen or a pencil if you do not have one? And we'll go through these and give yourself a mark out of four. So, question one. It is water and salt mixed together and dissolved and forming salt water. The mass stays the same because it's not escaping, not converted into a gas. It's just staying the same. So it's just mixed together. It's not allowed to escape. So it just stays the same. The reason for that is because it's dissolved and it's not allowed to escape. It's not converted into a gas. It's still a solid and liquid and it remains in the beaker. Okay. Question two, you've got ice, which is melted into water. That also stays the same. So the mass stays the same again for the exact same reason. All the liquid is contained within the beaker and it does not disappear in, and or turn it, be converted into gas and escape. Question three, though, this is a bit different because it's been left for a while. And if you've ever had a fizzy drink, you know that when you open it, it does make, it does release gas. So that will decrease because gas will escape from the open uh, can. And that will mean the mass will decrease over time. And the final one, magnesium reacts with acid and bubbles are again produced. That too will decrease because there is no stopper. There's nothing to prevent the gases escaping the conical flask. And that means it, the gas can escape. So the overall mass decreases. So. To recap, the first two both stay the same because no gas is produced, so the mass cannot escape. But the second two, because there is a chance for gas being produced and to escape, they, de they both decrease. So, key question here, if the mass decreased, so if the mass is escaping by gas, does this mean that the mass is not conserved? No. The mass is always conserved, even if it is converted to a gas and it escapes. 
just because it's escaping, it's still there as matter, it's still there as a substance, but it cannot be measured on a balance because it is it has escaped. Now, we have the second to last task here, which is a hinge question. This will be to master the technique of explaining decreases in mass. There are five statements here, A, B, C, D, and E. Can you decide which ones are true only, and then write down which ones are true, uh, and correspond that to the number one, two, three, four, or five. So can you pause the video for three minutes, have a go, and then we'll resume this in three minutes time. Okay, so you've had your three minutes there. We'll go through the answers now. So if you've got a green pen or a pencil, please pick it up and correct them. So the correct answer was two or B, D and E. So this one here, because B, when the mass can decrease uh, during a, ke a chemical reaction because the gas is released, that is true. D, mass is conserved during a precipitation reaction. Yes, because a solid is formed, not a gas. And E, a balanced equation helps people to see that mass is conserved in chemical reactions. Excellent, yes, because you can see how the elements are rearranged, but they are not changed, and there's no new elements formed or created. They are just, as I mentioned, rearranged. So A is false, and C is false. We are now on to our final task, the plenary. So on the uh, screen here, we have a Word equation for calcium carbonate plus hydrochloric acid and I'm at calcium chloride, water and carbon dioxide. And we have the symbol equation here, just shown below. However, this is not balanced. Your final task and to master how to explain decreases mass and just show how masses are conserved. Can you, and give yourself four minutes for this, try and balance this equation. So pause the video now please. Okay, so final thing, we're just going to go through this now. So the balance symbol equation will come up now. All you had to do was simply add a 2 into the HCl. HCl is hydrochloric acid because it already had the same number of calciums here. I had one calcium there, one calcium there. Number of carbons there, one, and there's one there. Oxygen, there's three there on this side, and one there and two there, making three. So you just simply had to, because there's two hydrogens there and two chlorines, but only one of each on there, you only had to put two on here. And this is now balanced and it shows how each on here, on the left hand side before the arrow, they are conserved. Whereas on the right hand side, they are also conserved, they are both the same number of elements. That concludes this video. Thank you.